Water come, might come in from an outside yeah. or right next to the yeah. bit. It's, and I haven't weeded that for, it's been uh, two two and a half weeks since I've weeded this. And those that are coming up are isolated and they look really weak, uh, to be, to to be honest. Yeah. yeah. This is fantastic. And so, now didn't, before, didn't you say you were building another one as well? Or, it, I remember somebody else was building, but it's not your friend down the road that has a commercial... Uh, we are we are going to build another one out here. Let me show you. You are okay. And it's warm in here, but it's not. I I have a jacket on and I'm not sweating. So is this where you laid your other pipe? Then is over on this side. Uh, what actually happened is that my neighbor was irrigating his field oh. and then closed my gate and all of this went underwater so inside you can see where the soil has settled mm -hmm. the bottom of that white board there mm -hmm. used to be at, at dirt level yeah so we've dropped over six inches eight almost eight inches yeah. um, because the so soil has settled so that's what happened there but um, all my pipes I only I've only put the pipes in for this geo air tunnel. Mm -hmm. I haven't put any other geo air pipes for the next one. So where will you put the next one since you're right here? So are you going to dig it up, even though you've got all your stuff in it? Yeah. So at, when this when, at the end of the season, um, w these will come out, and this will will we will plan on putting the other geo air. And now I um, I did I did apply for the USDA uh, cost share program. And I was approved for thirty-four hundred dollars for to build a greenhouse. Wow! I had to get my uh, property uh, converted to a farm, right? So I have a farm number, which may help on taxes, right? Uh, but I have to build, build. I have to buy kits that are pre-approved by them. Oh! I can't build my own. Well, and didn't this one only cost fifteen hundred? Isn't that what you said? Twelve hundred dollars to build that one, including the pipes underground. That was another twelve hundred. That was another twelve hundred. Okay. Yeah. So what I would like to build on this one is a studded north wall because mm -hmm. I don't worry about sun coming through there. I can insulate that north wall. I'll have the plastic come up just like I have on my new one, but at the top I'll have a ridge vent that goes all the way up top, so I can open that up. And any heat that get, accumulates will automatically just leave. Just go out. Yeah. That'll be a fun new video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that'll be good. What's cool about this, you notice I'm not using the automatic watering system out here. Uh, I call this gardening uh, on the cheap. So it's like you're flooding. It is. It looks like you're flooding. It is, and we're flooding. You know, we're, we're flooding this area right here, which ends up being this is an 18-inch growing area. Uh, soil bed, but the actual growing area is about 12 inches. Uh -huh. So I'm only having to water 12 inches here. It looks slightly waffle gardenish. I don't know what that means. In so in this area, most of our beds are peaked up like this, unless you're doing t potatoes, and then they do the little ridge. But this, so if you had a raised bed with sides that were just up like this and then flat on the top, you wouldn't oh. be able to retain your water inside the ridges. It would all wash off into your pathways. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen this called is waffle gardening, where they have the actual inside of the bed sunk slightly to retain water. Yeah. What you'll notice here is that my beds are raised. Yeah, they are. And so when we had that heavy, heavy rain last week, they just held on ago, to all of it, didn't they? All the aisles were completely flooded. It looked like a lake with islands. And so the, of wow. course, it rained just as much as it did in the in the soil area as it did in the aisle. You had drainage. But the, it, because it was above the walkway, mm -hmm. nothing flooded. That's amazing. Yeah. And and potatoes don't really like to be sitting with their roots completely wet all the time. They like to dry out a bit in between. Yeah. And so uh, last night we had uh, rain. rain and strong winds. Mm -hmm. So you see, I have these frames over here. And behind you, I, I took the plastic off this morning and mm -hmm. letting that dry out because it was covered with mud because you when know, we get so much water, we turned in right. mud. So I just take that plastic, I put it over the four foot bed or the uh, 18 inch bed, just let it drape down, tie the ends with some baler twine. I mean, uh, yeah, baler twine. And I just throw dirt up on the side of the plastic. 
and that also withstood 66 mile an hour winds. And it was, they, what, what were they calling it? They actually had a weather, a weather warning. Oh, is that right? They did. They, they had it on the, the scary weather coming news service that everybody needs to take cover. We're gusting up to 70 miles an hour. Don't be outdoors in this storm. And it made it in this storm. No That's amazing. So we don't have anything growing in the forest bed except for a bunch of weeds. The reason why these weeds are here is because um, over here there was a bale of opened hay, mm -hmm. or straw or something. And you can see where we had wiped most of it out. Yeah. Over here. But the rest got still in the ground. Uh -huh. And you can see this is where it was. And you can see down where it wasn't. Where it wasn't. <laughs> so if you're going to use compost or manure or mulch, you're going to be dealing with this. Yep. Well, and that's one of the reasons that I went to the boxes was because any kind of any kind of manure, you're going to have all the seeds. Any kind of mulch, you're going to have all the seeds, and um, forever. Right. And so it you just kind of get fed up at one point of being like, well. So don't. And the nice thing is you don't need compost mulch yeah. or manure. We're, yeah. We're growing in it with no compost mulch or manure, and you can see the productivity here. Well, and if you came to a point where it was kind of a scary situation and you couldn't get the petroleum fertilizers anymore, if you used a really good compost like from rabbits because they don't have the they what they eat doesn't have seeds in it, and if you just composted the rabbit manure with something like maybe sawdust, you would have a fertilizer. It wouldn't be as complete as what you have, but you could still use your growing medium and you'd have to tweak your fertilizer, but just because you don't, I want to make that really clear, just because you don't have the specialized mineral blend doesn't mean you couldn't grow the way that you're growing as long as you were really careful with your fertilizer. Because if fertilizer was no longer available, you your plants in there would die because the sawdust just doesn't have right. any nutrition in it. Right. But if things get really bad, your rabbits would die because you'd eat them or somebody else would eat them, your goats and so forth. So then there goes your, your manure. So what I've done is I have five years of all the nutrients already stored. That's fantastic. In the corner of my garden shed. Yeah. And I can store that forever mm -hmm. because they're crushed rock. They're not going to go bad. Mm -hmm. And so while other people are out of necessity are harvesting their livestock to stay alive themselves, therefore uh, cutting off their fertilizers yeah. and we're 97 percent of the of the world population lives in cities and don't have rabbits right. and cows and chickens um, everybody can store the nutrients that they need yeah. to grow food and so for very very little cost i was able to store and have stored five years supply of all the 16 16 16 the micronutrients the epsom salts the potassium and so forth that i need for my planting so out of curiosity how much space did that take cubic feet I'll show you. It doesn't so, take up much space, does right it? Right here, I've got my power washer back there. But here's my 525 pounds of 16, 16, 16 Epsom salts. You know, it's just like food storage. When you go to Sam's Club, you buy mm -hmm. an extra case or extra yeah. can. And that's what my wife does for the Epsom salts. Back there, we've got the, uh, the borax, the uh, gypsum, the phosphorus, and so forth. And I just, I just have it all stored here in buckets. So probably I could store everything in a closet. Yeah, you could put it in a closet and it would totally fit and you'd probably still have room left over. And this is enough to feed everything you've seen growing out there for five years. Well, and if it came down to it with what you're producing, um, half, most of what we feed our rabbits is actually uh, vegetable produce and branches from trees and stuff. So if you did need a protein source and you couldn't live just on vegetables, you could feed rabbits out of your garden. Right. That's what we're feeding our chickens. Yeah. We're feeding the, the leaves and the broccoli, the cabbage, and so forth. And they just love it. Yeah. So it's, I, I mean, it is a pretty complete plan as far as even 
if you had enough vegetables, you could also keep your livestock alive. Yeah. And this is completely portable. Yeah. If I need to pick up and go long-term camping, I can take all my nutrients with me. Yeah. This this a lot less heavy than manure. A lot because you don't have the water. Manure is so water intensively. Oh, it's so heavy. Well, then again, manure is going to sit outside. And, it's and it loses a lot of its nutrition when it sits outside, exactly. too. Yeah. So this is going to be good till the earth burns with fervent heat. Right. <laughs> It'll never go bad. That is amazing. Oh, and those are the pipes. Those are the pipes that he has under the ground. Yep. In case you guys that didn't see the other video. And when and you're still working on editing your big... Um, how to video, right? Right. I've got everything videoed on how to how I built the geo air tunnel and I want to be able to go through a, a full growing season to say, all right, this is good, th I do this mm -hmm. different, that kind of thing. Right. And, but I am editing the videos and I've got the materials list built and I'll put all that available on a DVD. And I'm so excited. I just can't wait to see it. And these are what you're thinking of putting on the sides of your greenhouse? Yep. That's right. I'm starting to collect. I've got five of them so far. I need a total of 24. And what you can see in here, what was this? It says what's on here. Paraclean acid solution? Paraloxine, yeah. But it's, you're not watering your plants out of it. You're not consuming anything, so it's not going to hurt anything just to be in the greenhouse. It's not like... It's not like you're trying to harvest okay. water with these things. Okay, it says organic peroxide. Okay. All right, so yes, I will be storing drinking water in here. Of course, really? I will clean them out with Clorox and make sure it's clean inside, and then put my water in there. It says it's uh, an organic peroxide, hmm. and in that concentration, it's going to be corrosive. But when you, you know, remove it by cleaning it properly, then it's not a problem. That's pretty neat. Well, and then if, if, if you feel like it is safe to use, then if you ever did have a problem with your well, you would have a buffer there if you had to use that water to water your plants. Right. And of course, everything goes through our Berkey water filter. Oh, so anything, so do you have it set up in your house or do you have one set up out here? I have what set up? For, for cleaning the water. So if we're going to drink out of these containers mm -hmm. or out of a pond or out of the Snake River, all that water would go through our Berkey water filter, which is on a kitchen, in our, our kitchen cabinet. Uh -huh. I mean, on our kitchen counter. So you just haul it out in buckets and fill things up? Or set up So yeah, we would take, and I've, I did this when I went off grid for a week. Uh -huh. I used a hand pump, pumped it out of the tanks, put it through the, you know, brought it in in five gallon buckets, put it in the Berkey water filter. Cool. Can you, can you think of anything else? We've been pretty comprehensive. Uh, people are very impressed by the garden. But it's a normal garden for a midlatter garden. Mm -hmm. You can't shortcut anything. It's a complete system. It has been updated since he first developed it. Uh, and he's, he's uh, made it more precise, more accurate, less expensive. Uh, and so it's easier and more productive to do than what, what he, he was doing in the 70s. And that's why yeah. we update the book to make sure that we have the latest information. It was really expensive when I did it. It was like, oh, this growing medium is so expensive. The fertilizer isn't the most expensive part, but the growing medium felt very expensive. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Well, let's, let's just do this. This is a four foot by 30 foot box. Okay. I had to fill it with soil. I could have used a number of different things. I decided to use sand and sawdust. Mm -hmm. I got the uh, sawdust at no cost. Okay. And I had to buy the sand. So I bought some coarse sand, actually black sand. That cost me $25. For the whole thing? The whole box cost me $25. Wow. Dirt should be dirt cheap. It should be. Up where we live, it, we have cobblestone, so you can't get dirt for love or money. Well, okay, right. So don't don't try to grow in the dirt. Right. Build a, a, a box that's going to last you decades using treated lumber and fill it with very inexpensive soil and then give the plants all the nutrients that they need and 
you've got a great garden. Soil only needs to do five things. It needs to hold the plant. Well, before we go there, now where I, bu where I bought the sand, I could, they also had raised box soil. Mm -hmm. If I would have bought that raised box soil and filled this four foot by 30 foot bed, it would have been $540. Been. That's what I bought. Okay. Um, they, if I would have used Mel's mix from Square Foot Gardening, that would have been $1,400. Mm -hmm, it would have been. <laughs> and then I had a lady here last month who had already hired a landscaper and a contractor to build boxes for her. She had two boxes, these sizes, and they were going to charge her $5,400 for the soil. Yeah. So before she ever left the greenhouse, she was calling her, her saying, we're done. Landscaper I don't said, think so. Yeah, don't do that. So soil needs to do five things. It needs to hold the plant. So will thousand dollar soil do that? Yeah. Will free sawdust yeah. and sand do it? <laughs> yeah. It needs to hold the nutrients. Doesn't need to provide the nutrients. Right. See if you're buying soil that is nutrient rich, then every weed seed that flies in here will be happy too. That's right. Right now only only the nutrients are at the base of the plant. Yeah. It needs to hold the water. As you sawdust. can see. Sawdust. What a fantastic idea. Holds the water. Now, if I were in Hawaii, instead of using sawdust, I may use coconut core. Mm -hmm. It's whatever is available. If I'm in Colombia, I may use uh, coffee husk, mm -hmm. a coffee bean, mm -hmm. you know, husk. Um, it, so it needs to do those three things. It needs to also allow drainage. Right. That's why we have the sand, right. the coarse sand. And it, it should help mitigate the temperature of the soil. So in the cold weather, this soil is warmer than dirt. And in hot weather, weather, it's cooler than dirt. Do you have a barrier at the bottom or are you just on top of dirt? We do not recommend putting a barrier below. Okay. Uh, we want the roots to get down into the soil. Now, some people uh, will use a peat cup when they plant to buy mm -hmm. these little peat pots and they get root bound don't they They get root bound same thing's going to happen in the cardboard right the, it's going to hit the cardboard and the roots can't go through right i've seen people use toilet paper tubes and same thing right you know it, the the plant starves to death because the roots can't spread out and get the nutrients in the water so what we do before we put a garden in is we till down